So it's just nice talking to everybody. Face to face, getting there. We're getting there, right? We're getting there little by little. So well, let's pray together. That, Lord, this is your day. We thank you for the challenge of your word already written upon our hearts. Now cause us to be open to the rest that you have for us. We pray, Lord, even on this subject that has had such, a, such an impact on individuals, marriages, and our lives, that you would give us ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying and hearts to be obedient in your name. Amen. All right, so um, there, as you know, those of you that are, don't know, we're, I've been doing this series called 12 Habits That Lead to Divorce and How to Avoid Them. Like I said to someone, it's me live and in person. There's no video. Sorry. <laughs> and, uh, and each one has a unique impact on every marriage. That's just the way it is. And every relationship. Some of these things are things that are ongoing and they impact us in different ways. Some of these things just happen and it's just a shock to the system. But whatever it is, realizing that any of these things left unattended or just kind of absorbed into our lifestyle, it's very easy for them to just uh, cause us to say, forget it, let's give up. So we want to avoid them, of course, just like anything else. Uh, you want to avoid, you know, uh, as you know, uh, Rebecca, our daughter-in-law, had gone through the, the, uh, the uh, very serious cancer. And uh, even though miraculously the Lord removed the tumor, which is still an awesome thing, um, you know, there is just no sugar. You know, sugar and cancer are not a good combination. You know, one feeds off the other. And so they just, so there's none. So, but it's a different, a lifestyle. You have to make a change. And sometimes it's a shock that wakes us up to make the changes that we need to. This particular one, um, 12 Habits That Lead to Divorce and How to Avoid Them, Seeing Porn, Erotica, graphic romance novels as harmless entertainment can lead to divorce. Now, I could put a whole list there, but basically it's everything that moves us away from biblical truth of understanding our sexuality. And let's face it, we are overwhelmed with it in the society we're in today. Uh, in the middle of all this, I attach to your notes this little uh, brochure. It's called Conquering Sexual Addictions. Now, that doesn't mean... Um, you know, we should be handing this out on the, on the street corner. It's just waking us up that there is a way that God has for us to step out of things. It's really, really important. Whoop. That's all right. Maskless. Oh, my goodness. Arrest that lady. Okay. So the key here for us as believers, and that's really the only place that it can really happen, the only way that we can really overcome that is through the power and the strength of Jesus Christ. We have been exposed to it in so many different ways, and of course the world we're in today sees it as a norm. It's normal, it's okay, what is your problem? And so we need to be able to look back on these things. So let me just, you know, as, as always, I always wanna make sure everything I teach is, on, uh, is biblically based. So the principles that we look at, when they're biblically based, then we have the ability by the Holy Spirit to empower, our, to overcome, uh, to embrace them. And so, uh, again, uh, our sexual fulfillment is designed by God to be completed through marriage. And, and, I, and even though we may have all kinds of other things, and if you're single and so on, but the, the fact is the fullness of that aspect of our marriage needs to, of our, of our life, will be fulfilled in the oneness that we share in marriage. So let's kind of look through some of these things. Maybe they're the wake-up calls, sort of like we were listening today, so we don't fall asleep spiritually in this area, which is very easy to do. Worldly thinking separates us from heavenly thinking. Now, this is no new concept. I share it many times as we're looking at biblical principles. But let's just look at this. Do not do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, I, I bolded that, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and, uh, has and does comes not from the Father but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God will live forever. So, so we have... We have to have a wake-up call that everything in this world is rooted in the values of the evil one. That, that has to be like a wake-up, a wake-up. Wake and, and we're not really waking up so well. I think COVID woke, woke us up to a lot of stuff, a lot of things that we didn't need, a lot of stuff that we did need. All of a sudden, the option of going to church was like, what, I can't go? You know, and, and just these different things. But it's really important for us 
to realize that the things that the world values, even the most beautiful things, are still worldly values unless Christ gets the glory for it, unless they're biblically based. No matter how good it feels or seems, if God is not glorified by it, the enemy has control over it. And that's really important. That's really important. It's important for us because as Christians and over the years and just the way it is, those things have been stretched a little and a little and a little and a little and a little. And even you say, well, that, what does that have to do here? Because that's how the enemy works, little by little by little. I'll tell you a, a quick story because our time is always so challenging here. Um, this is going back years ago, which I, have, I am able now to say things like that uh, years ago. Amy Grant, many of you probably don't even know who Amy Grant is, but many of you may know. And there was Amy Grant and there was Brooke Shields. Now, they have similar look, long dark hair and everything else. Brooke Shields did a commercial for a pair of jeans, who Calvin Klein jeans. And she was kind of bending over with the jeans and she said, nothing comes between me and my Calvin Klein jeans, implying nothing comes between her. Amy Grant did a album cover with the same position, same pose, and I forgot, and I think it was, you know, uh, only with God or something like that. I, had, I went to a special breakfast for them to introduce the understanding of crossover music. This was all new, because it was Christian music and there was worldly music, and they were very separated. But she was the first one, and they and literally had a luncheon for pastors so we could understand what crossover music was. Just the craziest thing. And sometimes I cringe when I see what some Christian, how some Christian artists present themselves and are thinking of the way things are. And of course, if you've never seen the transition, which is great, you know, anyone with gray hair that's been a Christian, you can watch the transition. I'm not saying it's all bad but we've got to wake up. And, and when we start imitating the world, everything opens up, including this area of our sexual life. Cravings, lustings, boastings, all block out the blessing of God that he desires to satisfy us with. Sexual pleasure is based out of, uh, is, is based out of covenant promises. Worldly sexual pleasure imitates and rejects biblical sexual pleasure. And the Song of Solomon is what our sexual pleasure should be in the relationship that we have. And it's wonderful, but it's based on biblical truth and a relationship that I share as a husband and wife. So, again, we have to, it's so, any movie that you watch, that's a worldly-based movie. So anything in there that's not of the Lord is not of the Lord. We, we can't, you know, there's some scenes in it that you, know, you probably shouldn't you know, fast forward. And have to, uh, Phyllis and I were watching something not that long ago, and we're both sitting there, and finally we said, I don't want to watch this anymore, do you? No, I don't want to watch this anymore, do you? You know, and you know, the, the off button, that's what the off button's on there for. On the, but you just, little by little, you're like, you know, you make an ex exception, you, know, you make an exception. This was just a TV show. This was not, we're not watching a, a movie. And it's just very simple, and, it, and it's not only the sexual things, it could be anything else. So cheap grace gives us a sinful, gives a sinful wiggle room. In other words, 1 Corinthians 6.12, everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but, it, but I will not be mastered by anything. Food is for the stomach, stomach for food, but God will destroy them both. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. So worldly rose-colored glasses cause us to decide how close we can get to the edge. Remember Pastor Forsyth years ago said that in one of his, and you know, you, you hear a million sermons and little pieces kind of stick there. And one of the things he said is, we, the church needs to be the, the, um, the fence at the top of the, mount, uh, top of the cliff, not the ambulance at the bottom. In other words, we gotta be there and say this is, this is wrong. This is a wrong way of thinking, and, and, and it's very easy, again, because we don't even realize how little by little by little, like, like the challenge is harmless entertainment. Oh, what's the big deal? Oh, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? I mean, it's a big deal. But again, because it's, it's not landing in our living room with all the bells and whistles but, it, whistles, but it's coming little by little by little by little on so many ways. And, and forget the uh, video games. Now, I'm not a gamer, 
but um, you know, as I've been exposed to them in various who knows how different ways, just the the way that uh, the characters are presented is all sensual. It is, uh, at least certainly the ones that I've had the ability to see. Grace allows us to learn, relearn, and grow in the correct decision. So in other words, we come into this place, we realize the way things are, and we have to say, okay, I, I've, I've got this all mixed up. God, by your grace, help me to move away from these things that have just become part of our lives. I think Pastor said 28 days to create a habit, and it's very easy to do. And the habit could even be sort of turning a hard heart to this, just saying, okay, what's the big different, different deal? I like the show, so it's got some scenes in it. That's a habit. Now I'm just saying, okay, so now I've just created a habit that this kind of entertainment with these kind of scenes are okay. That's become a habit, and that habit continues to grow. So the purpose of our body is for God. Anything else is a flesh, and we'll have fruit from that. So again, from Galatians 5, know the difference between the flesh and the spirit. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. You know, we have to take a breath with that and not just read on. That's a, that's a powerful statement. This is about salvation. And, you know, we'll read it all. Oh, well, God, uh, God understands. He, he knows. You know, this is what the Word of God says. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, on and on, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, orgy. I warn you that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. That has to, like, cause us to stop. Now, we mix that with grace, but not, over, or not overly uh, what we call cheap grace. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. See, see, here's the neat part. When we come into this place where the, we're wrestling with these things, the answer is, is right there. The thing that we need in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, that offsets all these other things. And you think, my goodness, that doesn't seem like anything. But empowered by the Lord, it does. Because all these areas are filling in places where the fruit of the Spirit is not allowed to be open and moving in our lives. But just as the fruit of the Spirit is one fruit, not fruits of the Spirit, so is the fruit of the flesh. All the, sinf all the sinful nature sins are connected. One leads to the other, as does the fruit of the Spirit. So again, the acts of the sinful nature. The, the, re, the Greek there is not this one all separate. It's the acts. In other words, they're all together, and these are, the, these are the places that we can read them. But the fact is they're all interconnected. So one leads to the other, one leads to the other, one leads to the other. It's all one way of our lives moving away from the things of God. Where the fruit of the Spirit, the same thing. So, in other words, we see it as all harmless because we don't see the connection between all the sins listed, you know, but a lifestyle is birth. See, here's why, as, as believers, you say, well, I, I just want to stop this addiction, this one here. Well, what about this over here? No, just we'll focus on this one, just this one. Because this, this one's really the real, this is the real sin. These are really inconveniences and, and annoying fits of rage, jealousy, but this one here I need to get rid of. But the reality is the way that, that, uh, that um, Paul writes, it's all connected. So you're talking to me that jealousy could create sexual morality? Yes. Impurity and debauchery could connect drunkenness? Yes. Hatred? So we've got to step back. See, this is why God wants, this is the big picture and so when we work with people that have, and I've worked just so, with some people that have, you know, a, a addiction to pornography, it is always connected into something else. It always is connected into something else. It doesn't just fall out of the sky. It's not genetic. It's something that's connected to something else. And so there's, there's, a, uh, there's a, a, an unfolding, and one of the ways it unfolds is in terms of this area of porn, erotica, 
graphic romance models, uh, uh, novels. And those are really, those are just as bad as anything else. The romance novels, they're all very articulate. They're all things that we need to um, just step away from. And so um, we see it as harmless because we don't see the connection. A renewed mind and life produce the fruit of the Spirit. It matters what baseline we choose. God, un God's understands is the biggest lie we can fall for. God does not. He gives us his word so we can make this transformation. He is not there to go, yeah, this is what I wrote, but I get it. It's a little, it's a little overwhelming. You just uh, do the best you can. And that's not the way it works. And so that's why we see the damage that this kind of thinking, this harmless, who cares, what's the big deal, has on marriages, on relationships, on work ethic. Years ago, this is going back quite a few years ago, when all the, the computers were first coming in, and companies had uh, different um, filters on the company. And I got a call from someone, and they said, uh, Pastor, can I talk with you? I said, yeah. He goes, um, I, I, think, I, I, mean, I think I'm in real trouble. And I thought, oh, well, okay. And he began to unfold that while he was traveling, he looked at some, uh, he was looking at pornography, which apparently was on a regular basis. And the filters in his company filters shut his computer down, even though he was not in the office. Shut the computer down. He panicked to try to do something to get it unlocked. Of course, that couldn't happen. And he got fired because this is, this is not what the company... So, I mean, it's, it's this kind of thing that we, that we have. We can't be hidden. And it can't be hidden, and, and it needs to be brought to the surface, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But the key is realizing, and again, this is what the world would have us understand. We think, don't worry about it. You're a little over, overzealous here. You know, God understands. It's the blah, blah, all this stuff. But the fact is, it is a spiritual battle. Because if the enemy can come in, and this is men and women. Sometimes we just think, oh, he must be just talking to the men. The rise of, of the watching and engaging in pornography for women is, is just as, it's not at the same level, but it's definitely uh, on its way. The key here is that, as 1 Corinthians 10 says, so whether we eat or drink or whatever we do, do it all for the glory of God. Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews, Greeks, or the church or God. Or even as I try to please everybody in every way. For I am not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. I follow my, follow, uh, I'm sorry, follow my example as I follow Christ. In other words, there's a battle going on. Ask yourself, is this activity, book, movie, gathering, for the, or gathering for the glory of God. Is this, is, this, is this doing, is this for the glory of God? I'm not saying that you're going to have to have a church service every time you turn the TV on, but am I making excuses right away? Am I making choices? Am I setting my timing? Am I just excusing things? I, I can't believe, I always am amazed, you know, this was not like the first topic I chose to say, hey, let's teach on this. Um, but then I hear what Pastor shared this morning, and I thought, falling asleep? For sure. Because you have to fall asleep in this area to keep going. Just like, I'll just go to shut that off, and I'll shut that off. And believe me, it's God's gracious, but the fact is, it's a battle. So if, if, if not, then you have to wake up to the setting we're in. There's a place as this unfolds where we have to move away from thinking this is just harmless entertainment, it's no big deal, uh, other guys, other gals, other families, other couples, other individuals do it. It's no big deal. We need to wake up and say, here I am. What do I have to change? And beyond filters and everything else, there's choices that have to be made. If it takes 21 days to keep a habit, it's going to take 21 days or 28 days or whatever it is to change that habit. And it may be very real things. Unfortunately, we're in a today where our phones, everything is, everything is so accessible. So there have to be times, you know, I, for, I, I'm on Facebook because I like to see my grandkids and other people's grandkids. And so every so often someone will say to me, yep, I'm off Facebook. I thought, how can you do that? Don't you just lose communication with the whole world? And so, you know, uh, this is the quite another weird, you know, how God does those strange things. So I was 
debating that, thinking, well, should, maybe I should just go off it. And then I don't know what happened, but my Facebook account went whacked out. You know, enter your password. No, enter another password. How many passwords? I only have one password. I know what it is. And I'm just kind of like panicky, putting one in, putting another one in, putting another change password. And all of a sudden I thought, okay, God, you're trying to get me off of Facebook, and I'm trying to get on Facebook. So, and you know, when it was all done, I turned it on one day, and it was like, oh, it's all back in order. I don't even, I said to somebody, this has ever happened to you? No, I've never had that happen, Pastor. That's when I realized God is trying to do something here, and I'm fighting him. I'm fighting him. And that's what we have to realize, that God is trying to have clean, holy vessels. In this area here, he may bring you to the point where you're just frustrated. And I'm glad, because if we're frustrated, we realize something has to change, then something has to change. And if that means, you know, the agreement, you as a couple or if you as an individual are able to say, okay, if one of us is bothered by anything that we're watching, we shut it off, period. Anything, any, anything that comes into the house or any, anything that it's read or, or any, anything, anything. And, and, and if we don't do that, if we just kind of excuse it, that, that habit becomes the habit of excusing these things. And all of a sudden, we're sitting in the middle of something. We thought, how do we get in here? How, how did this happen? How did this unfold? Because it's very easy for that to do. So this, uh, this um, little brochure here kind of helps us. So how do we, first of all, we have to make, an, we have to understand, as I shared back in the scriptures, is that there's a place here we have to say, okay, worldly thinking separates us from heavenly thinking. Is that important to us? Is that important to us? See, you see what I'm doing? I'm not just saying, let's just look at pornography and all these things. Worldly thinking is where it starts. And then the enemy just kind of fills in where there's an empty spot, whatever it may be. So if my worldly thinking about my relationship with my, in my marriage relationship, if it's worldly thinking, then the enemy will say, no problem. I will fill in lots more worldly stuff. If my understanding of finances is worldly understanding of finance, the enemy's like, no problem. I'll fill in more worldly stuff. And that's why I renewed mine and renewed heart. Next week, I'm going to be speaking on that um, uh, on the, at the pulpit and it's been something God is just burning in my heart, a renewed mind and a renewed heart. And not an, easy, not an easy change, but an important one if we're going to see God do great things in our lives. And so um, to take action in the spirit and impact the flesh, take a good, hard look at the entry points of porn, erotica, graphic romance, and an attitude uh, that, uh, that none of it is, uh, really matters. Take a hard look at that. Just, and here's what I have found over the years. When I, when I say, God, help me in this area, or show me, or give me an understanding what I, what I need to see, you know what? He, he starts revealing it. So you'll go through a week, and you'll think, I have never been bombarded with so much of this in my life, because that's when the Lord is revealing to you. See, see this is what it is. See, the enemy spreads it out, so you're like, what's the big deal? That was like two weeks ago. That was yesterday. It's today's today. No day. It's Sunday. But the enemy, that, that's what he does. But the Lord will say, I'll show you. And he will lay it out for you all week long. That thought, that thing, that who cares. All those things will be laid out. So that's the first thing. And then um, get rid of anything, including artwork that is inappropriate. Artwork, anything else. There are certain things. Um, I think I've told the story a million years ago. But um, when I first got saved, we had a friend that was involved in, in a, a Satan worship. He was a, um, uh, I guess, witch or I guess is in the Orlock, and, uh, and he, uh, he got wonderfully saved. God's used him in a tremendous way. We became friends we, because as opposite as we, could, as we could possibly be, completely opposite. And he was in my, uh, I was at my room, and I had some books that I brought on from architecture. And he goes, did you read that book? I said, yeah, it's a, you know, like a classic. Everybody has to read this as an architect. He goes, that woman that wrote it is a witch. I will tell you exactly. He goes to the thing. He goes, I'm, so I'm like, okay. Okay, I won't read it anymore. He goes, no, we have to burn it. So here I was a new Christian, and we go out in the backyard, my parents' backyard, I wasn't married or anything, and we're burning the book, and my mother comes out and says, what are you doing? <laughs> we're burning this book. I'm so glad she never asked why, because I wasn't really sure myself why, but I knew we had to burn this book, and there we are, we burned the book, you know. 
$29.95, I don't know, whatever it was. But the idea is you'd be amazed what magazines come into your house. What magazines come into your house that are inappropriate? You know, you think, oh, it's just a women's magazine. Yeah, it's a women's magazine, but what are the pictures all about? When <laughs> we always had the newspaper in the morning, and um, <laughs> when the newspaper would come, I was up early, and so I'd get the paper, and I'd tear out everything that was inappropriate so that when Bradley came down, he could look at the paper. It was like reading Swiss cheese, you know? And, uh, but, you know, I did, you just... You can, you can walk around your house and say, is this, this is inappropriate? Yeah, but, my, but this was something special that, yeah, but is it, in a, is it appropriate? You know, classic statues, classic artwork, sometimes are, we are like, oh, well, that was Michelangelo. He didn't know any better. No, you know exactly what he was doing, you know? And um, determine if any TV show movie, uh, or movie mocks the purity of sex by sexual scenes or language that is funny but not Christ-like. And use a spiritual yardstick and filter, uh, and filter, like, um, and so. So the important thing is again, what are we laughing at? And here's the neat part: you don't have to be the um, patrol guard, but if you say, "Lord, show us, reveal to us in this home, reveal to me in this home," don't be surprised if you're watching something you've watched a hundred times and it's a rerun, and you're like, "Oh, I can't believe that! I, I can't believe we watched that." Because the Holy Spirit will wake you up. Because his heart is to help us clean these areas out and, and, and sober us. And sober us to what really matters. And so at the very end here, I wrote, you know, Christ, if, if this is this beautiful prayer that we always hear prayed, right? Christ is the, is the head of the home, the unseen guest at every meal, the silent listener at every conversation. It's almost like you need to put that on the TV, at the table, Everywhere. Everywhere. So it's not like, well, I'm going to go in the den. I think Jesus is in the living room, and I'll watch what I want to see or do what I want to do over here. He's everywhere. He's the unseen guest. He's the one that's there. Now, that's, this is not guilt, but it's for us to be sobered, to wake up. Because it's, it's, it's everywhere, and that's exactly the intention of the enemy. So at the very end, and that's what this uh, brochure is all about, this little track thing, but I'll just quickly go through these points in the time we have. The first is, how do, we, how do we move from here? How do we move away? How do we move to a place of healing? Now, again, this isn't like boom, 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 boom. Thank you very much, done. You know, physical therapy, those of you that have ever been through it, I watched my father go through it. It's time after time after time. You go from the inability to the ability to do something. When Phyllis's dad was in this accident, and uh, we came to see him, he couldn't even move his arm. He couldn't move anything. And by the time he was living with us, he's walking, talking, drinking, going to McDonald's. You know, everything was fine. But in that moment, I thought, this is never going to change. How, how could this change? How, how could this possibly change? But physical therapy, one step at a time. One step ahead, maybe a step back. Three steps ahead, maybe one step back. But little by little by little. So this all starts with confessing to God. Start by confessing to God. I mean really confessing to God. You know, even as a couple, hey, God, forgive us. We had no idea. You know, we just kind of lost track of things. Give us wisdom. Give us understanding. Give us truth. Like I said, that one night when Phyllis and I were watching this, uh, someone said, oh, this is a great series. You should really watch it. It's just so funny. People say that. And you go, um... So we started watching, we were like, okay, you know, it was other things too, it was deception, it was lying, it was all kinds of things that were happening, and we're kind of watching it, and then finally, so we, we said, yeah, we're watching, he goes, oh yeah, I know there's some places in there that are probably going to be uncomfortable with. Could, could you have told me that before we started? You, you told us to watch this series, and we're trying to figure out, is this, like, what? It's amazing when you think, with everything, why are we doing this? You know, it's like we're intelligent people baptized in the Holy Spirit and we still needed like a, a spiritual slap in the head to work, walk away. Renewing your mind from Romans 12. We, that's a key. Get, as the stuff gets out, put the good stuff in. Renewing our mind. Ask for a renewed mind. God, just show me a new understanding. Learn to control yourself. That's an important thing. Habits change. This is long before cell phones, long before computers and, and uh, 
and where you could view pornography at any point. You had Playboy and, and all those books, and they were at, they were at the 7-Eleven. That's, that's where they lived. And so I remember one guy says, it's so hard for me every time I go in for my morning coffee. You know, there are the magazines, and I just, you know, I fall every time. I said, well, I have a solution that will work every time. He goes, what is that? I said, don't get your coffee at 7-Eleven. That's how you're going to do it. Now, of course, it was a lot simpler then. But it may mean taking your phone, and when you walk in, it goes in a drawer. Do you really need the phone? It's funny, I've done an experiment with that on my phone because I'm so important, you know, I think the whole world needs to get in touch with me. So at the end of the night, if I leave it upstairs or, or leave it in the other room while we're doing whatever we're doing, and I, I pick up the phone thinking, okay, I've got to return all these calls. There's like one, you know, <laughs> your car insurance is running out, you know, your warranty is running out, please contact us immediately. So, so that's not as important as I thought it was, you know. So you... Changes, changing habits are important. What you see, where you go, what you do, and if Facebook or anything on your, on, your, on your phone is a problem, block it, take it off, don't pick it up. Understand the covenant of sex. There's a sexual understanding of who we are in the Lord, and it's a powerful, powerful oneness that we share in Christ. Um, walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Just, and that just takes time of thinking deep spiritual things, understanding spiritual life, have praise and worship. We always have praise and worship music on in the house. We don't always agree on which one. I'm, I'm also sort of in a, in a Gaither season. I don't know if any of you even know who Bill Gaither is, but uh, I don't know why Phil goes, really? I said, I, I don't know. It's just in this Gaither season, you know. But there's, you know, if you have Alexa, she'll find something for you. Don't worry about it, you know. But just changing, see, the, see what happens. Oh, this is really coming at the end here, but see what happens is when we are sinning, when we are doing those things, we don't even realize it. There's a whole environment that we've established around us. So we're trying to say, no, I'm not going to do it. But the fact is all these reinforcements have been established spiritually and everything else. And so in order to do that, we may have to change completely different things. We will, you know, you may say, well, I'm not watching TV for the whole uh, another a month. That's so radical, but it may take that to stop this cycle. It may type certain conversations, certain people, you know, that always have just certain things, like I said, books, magazines, whatever it may be, use of your phone. And believe me, if you say, God, help me, I don't want to look at anything on my phone, it's going to change. When you pick that phone up, the Holy Spirit will be like, yeah, what are you doing? What are you doing? I just, it's, I don't, I just, I don't, I am put it away. Pick it up again, Holy Spirit. What are you doing? What are you doing? Now, the Holy Spirit will not strike you with lightning, but it'll feel like it when you break through and go back to what you were doing. And then flee from evil, and I think that is the key. There may be people's situations. There may be people who say, hey, well, you know, uh, we're going to go, we're going to see this, we're going to do that. I, I know you're a Christian, and there's a little off color. I think that's the word they used to use years ago, off color. What does that mean, off color? But it's just, you know, it's just some things you're probably going to be uncomfortable with. Oh, thanks for letting me know. Yeah, we'll pass. Versus, oh, you know, we really should go. It's, you know, where you're at and uncle, and they just, they're only in town for a week, and I know this is important to them. No, just we're not going to be able to go. It's amazing. People give us an out, and we don't go out, you know, with these things. So this whole thing, when it comes to this, it's just what I want to hope to give to us today in this class, just the big picture the big picture that says, okay, i got to stop. I don't want this to be the dividing place. And I could go on with a whole bunch of other things of just terms, how it impacts a relationship in so many different ways, how it impacts your work. How, you know, the, the more of an addiction it becomes, like any addiction, the more it affects every value, everything, time, money, all kinds of things. It just goes from one to the other. And believe me, if you think that these are random things that come onto your phones and computers and everything else, you are sadly mistaken. It is they know exactly what you need to see and hear and experience. One night there was something came up on my Instagram, which I'm still figuring out what Instagram is. And I said to Phyllis, <laughs> I shocked her. I said, oh, look at this. She's like, oh, look at this. I said, well, how do we get it? It was, like, it was like, how do we get rid of this? I don't know how to get rid of this. I shut the phone off. <laughs> I don't know if it's still there or not, but I just, I, 
It was like, I mean, I don't know where it came from. It just, but they know, they know what you're doing. You could be looking at shoes, and the next thing you know, there's something related, you know, I don't know. So just wake up. And if you, if either of you say, you know, talk to the other person, and, or one, or, you know, you just say, hey, wow, boy, you've been talking to me about this. I'm really getting it now. This is not the time to beat each other up. This is the time to say, hey, we gotta, we gotta do this together. Or if you have a friend and you're single and you, hey, this time, how do we gotta do this together? How are we gonna walk through this together? How are we gonna see what God wants to do? Because he's got a plan that's bigger than just stopping something. I love that about God. It's never just about stopping something. It's about empowering us into a new way of living our lives. So, so Lord, thank you in this short time. May your Holy Spirit just increase our understanding of these areas. And I pray over all of us that when we get to the place where we trivialize sin of any kind, speak to us by the power of the Holy Spirit, wake us up, and cause us to see what you need us to see in everything. Your name glorified and honored. So we thank you in your name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. So we'll see you next week. All right?